If there's one thing that people absolutely love about Asian food, it would have to be the miraculous world of dumplings. So today on this YouTube channel, we are starting a new series. This is Dumpling School. And lesson one is the most famous and most basic dumpling of all, the classic Chinese jiaozi. Okay, welcome to Dumpling School. The reason I wanted to do this series is because there are so many different types of dumplings and so many people tell me they wish they could make their own dumplings, but they can't. It's actually incredibly easy to do. We're gonna go through a lot of different types of dumplings. It's not a series that's gonna sort of run for a little bit and then end. We're gonna do the next maybe four or five weeks doing some dumplings each week and then might take a break and we'll come back to it later. So please stay tuned to this channel and I'll take you all the way through to make sure that you can make great dumplings at home. Of course, the best place to start is, I guess, where most people start making dumplings, the classic Chinese jiaozi. Jiaozi just means dumpling, essentially. You know, in Chinese cuisine, you can break your jiaozi into different categories. It can be shui jiao, which is uh, boiled dumplings, or zheng jiao, uh, steamed dumplings, or even guo tie, which is the, the fried dumplings. Lots of different kinds, not all that different in how they're made. People get really caught up in the folding of dumplings, but let's go through everything. We're gonna make our skins, we're gonna make our filling, we're gonna cook the dumplings, it's gonna be fun. Let's start first of all by making our dumpling skins. You can of course buy skins, nothing wrong with doing that. If you wanna just go out and buy some skins now, go do that. If you want to make your own, let me show you how to do it. Just some regular all-purpose flour. And there's really two classic kinds of basic dumpling skin. Lots of different variations on it, but your classic dumpling skin falls into two categories of either a hot water dough or a cold water dough. Generally, your hot water dough, obviously made with hot water, is gonna produce a slightly thinner skin. It's a little bit more tender, usually used for steamed dumplings or something like that. Your cold water dough is a bit more all-purpose. You can use that for boiled dumplings, etc. I actually, when I'm making jiaozi, I tend to make it always with hot water dough because even if I'm boiling the dumplings, if you make them right, they still hold together. So I'll show you how to do a hot water dough. Exact same proportions if you're making a cold water dough, just use cold water instead of hot. This, I think, is the most useful thing for making dumplings. A kitchen mixer can help you make the dough, can make the filling, everything. Of course, if you don't have one, totally fine. Just mix and knead the dough by hand, mix and knead the filling by hand. But to get started, dough hook on the mixer. I've got about three cups of all-purpose flour going in. Just grab some hot water. About half the volume of the flour, so three cups of flour, about one and a half cups of water. No need to sift the flour or anything like that. Like I said, it's actually really simple. Water and flour in, and then just get it onto a relatively low speed to really bring that dough together. That'll probably take about 10 minutes to become a really smooth dough. So while that's happening, I'm gonna boil some cabbage for my filling. So it looks pretty good now. So just lightly flour my hands and a piece of cling film here. You see the dough's really quite wet and that's the way it should be. We're gonna add quite a lot of flour to it in the rolling process. So if you start with the dry dough, by the time you finish rolling it out, it's gonna be a little bit too dry to work with. It's gonna be a bit more flour on top. Just wrap this up and put that aside for about half an hour to an hour. The dough's resting now, so it's time to make the filling. The ingredients are pretty simple. I've got some pork mince here, and it's kind of a fattier mince. It's probably around 25% fat, which is really good for dumplings. A few other flavorings and seasonings, some ginger, some garlic, sugar, salt, a bit of white pepper. I've got some garlic chives to go in there as well, and of course, my boiled cabbage. The cabbage has just been boiled and then drained, but I've rinsed it with cold water because you don't want to put a hot ingredient into the filling. I just need to really finely chop this and really important, make sure I'm squeezing out as much of the liquid as possible. After the cabbage is chopped, we can get everything back into the mixer. Yes, I'm gonna use the mixer for making my dumpling filling. The reason I'm gonna do that is because my grandma always used to tell me, you stir a dumpling filling in one direction. It's kind of an old wives' tale, but if you look at the science behind it, it actually makes a lot of sense. You see, meats like pork contain proteins called actin and myosin. Those proteins, when they're in an acidic environment, can create 
a kind of a gel net. The filaments of protein need to be aligned to create that net. What that net does is it traps moisture. So in fact, stirring and dumping in one direction aligns those protein filaments and creates a broader net for capturing moisture. I know that all sounds a bit scientific and technical, but all you need to know is that if you stir your dumpling in one direction in the presence of salt, you're gonna get a more moist and a more springy dumpling. The best way to do that is actually in a mixer. Of course, if you don't wanna use a mixer, just do it in a bowl or a pot and just make sure you're stirring in one direction. I'm gonna use the beating paddle for this. In goes about a kilo of pork mince, some ginger, garlic, sugar, salt, some white pepper, and I'm gonna throw in some Shaoxing wine as well. Okay, take a look at this now. You can see the mince is in kind of pieces. That makes sense because it's minced meat. But let's take a look at it again after we've mixed it all together. Okay, so now after about five minutes of being bashed around in a mixer, you can see that the meat's no longer in these kind of round minced pieces. It's kind of elongated and, and, and lengthened. That means the proteins inside have done the same thing. You can even see that the texture of it is already springy just as we touch it like that. Now, I can throw in my Chinese cabbage and then also some garlic chives. I'm just gonna cut that into about half centimetre pieces. Of course, these other ingredients are optional. You know, you don't have to include Chinese cabbage. You don't have to include garlic chives. Everybody makes their jiaozi differently. But I think the only thing you've really got to worry about is whether to add egg or not. If you're using a lot of vegetables in there. The thing that binds a dumpling together is protein, it's not starch. So the protein is there from the meat. The vegetables you add in don't have protein. So if you add a lot of vegetables, you need to add more protein to bind it together. That's why you add egg. So we haven't added too many vegetables to this. It's still a very meaty dumpling. So I don't think I need to add some egg to this. Just on a slightly lower speed, I'll beat that again until everything's combined. Okay, that's all nicely mixed and you can see just how different our filling is. It's not minced meat anymore, it's a dumpling filling. It's almost like a paste, but it's still a very meaty paste. What's actually quite important to do at this point is to taste that filling. My grandma always used to just grab a piece of the raw filling and throw it straight into her mouth. If you're a bit squeamish about doing that, just get some water on the boil, drop a little bit in, boil it and taste it. It should taste really well seasoned. If it's not well seasoned, you might have to add a little bit more sugar, might have to add a little bit more salt, something like that, even some soy sauce if you wanted some extra umami in there. When the filling tastes good and well seasoned, throw it into the fridge, clean down everything, and I'll show you how to fold some dumplings. Okay, the preparation is done and this is the main event. This is the dumpling folding. We've got our filling, got our dough. The only other things we need, a couple of trays to put the dumplings lined with a bit of baking paper. And then here, we've got a rolling pin. This is a Chinese style rolling pin. If you don't have one of these, which you probably don't, just go down to your hardware store and get them to cut a length of dowel or broom handle or something like that. I'd say that's about a two centimetre diameter there. This is a spatula for taking the filling. Didn't have one of these, just a regular butter knife is totally fine. So, a lot of flour. We need a lot of flour for the rolling process. Onto a wooden board, really be quite generous with it, and keep a bowl of flour handy because you're going to use quite a lot of it. As you can see, this dough is quite sticky, even with the flour that we put on there. It's probably going to stick a little bit, but we'll just cut off a bit of that dough now, keep the rest of it wrapped up so it doesn't dry out too much. And with more flour, we'll just roll this into a snake shape. It doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be exactly even. If you have around about the same volume of dough in each one of these cuts, you'll end up with dumplings of about the same size. Each one of these pieces of dough, turn it up on its end. So not on its side and press it down. You turn it up on its end and then press it down with the heel of your hand. Now with your rolling pin, give that a little bit of a flour. And the action is essentially to pick up one side of the dough roll it with the pin and then turn it a quarter of a revolution, so 90 degrees, roll again, keep turning and rolling. And that should get you to a point where you're getting, it doesn't have to be exactly, but a relatively round dumpling skin. And the benefit of doing it this way is actually you're only really pushing towards the center. So you're getting a thinner skin on the outside and a slightly thicker skin on the inside. And obviously when you're pinching the outsides together, that means you're gonna get a relatively even amount of skin 
on all of your dumplings. Remember again, just roll it halfway in. You're not going all the way across the dumpling, just halfway into where you've picked it up. So into the centre, turn it 90 degrees, more flour onto the board if you need it. Just keep turning it. Now, once you've rolled them out, they do tend to dry out quite quickly. So you want to maybe roll two or three at a time, or even just one at a time, and start to make your dumplings. The folding of the dumpling. This is one of the really big misconceptions about dumplings, that they have to have these intricate pleats and folds and you have to get the pleats right. This comes from most people being exposed to dumplings first in a restaurant. Restaurants try to make their dumplings look really fancy, but I can tell you, most dumplings in the world are not intricately folded with pleats. This, for a standard jowza, is how you fold a dumpling. Take a little bit of filling, don't take too much, press it into the center. Then fold it up, pinch it together at the top, and that is a dumpling. No folds required whatsoever. Now, if you missed that, what I did was I essentially made two Vs with my fingers. On my left hand, the index finger is straight. On my right hand, the index finger is bent. You then put them together, so they make a V with your thumbs, and you squeeze one side with the index finger that's straight, and the other side with the index finger that's bent, and you kind of get that crescent shape of a good dumpling. It's hard to explain, but actually very, very intuitive when you do it yourself. Pinch together at the top, one side with a straight index finger, another side with a bent index finger, and that is a dumpling shape. It makes life a lot easier, and actually, it makes the dumpling making really fast. You know, this much mix will make about 100 dumplings, and I'll probably whip through that in a little less than an hour. It's always good to get friends around to make dumplings. I always used to do that when I was a bit younger, but these days, to be honest, I find it quite relaxing to do it by myself. Just throw something on the TV or listen to some music, sit back, make a couple of hundred dumplings. Now, the reason why I'm putting these dumplings onto trays lined with baking paper is because you're not likely to eat 100 dumplings in one sitting, or well, most of us aren't anyway. These are absolutely brilliant for freezing. You can freeze them raw just as they are. So put them on some baking paper. Once you've got one tray, throw it into the freezer until it's kind of just hard enough to not stick to each other. And then you can just throw them all into a big Ziploc bag and you've got dumplings for days. Now, the easiest way to cook your jaza is to boil them. I've made these with a hot water dough rather than a cold water dough, but I do that because it gives me more flexibility. I can steam these, I can fry them, I can fry steam them, and as we kind of go through dumpling school, I'll show you all those different ways of doing it. But just to get started, just for absolute basics, I'll show you how to make a shui jiao, which is a, a regular boiled dumpling. Just some water brought to the boil, no salt or anything, and you drop the dumplings in. It's many as you like. Now, as the water comes back to the boil, obviously putting the dumplings in is gonna knock it back from 100 degrees as it was. As it comes back to the boil, you need to put in about half a cup, three quarters of a cup of cold water again, just to take it back a little bit. If it's boiling too vigorously with these handmade skins, it can break apart, it can be a bit too rough. So keeping it just kind of below that boiling point is really, really good for cooking dumplings. The dumplings are done when they rise to the top. Give them about another 30 seconds to a minute. Take them out with a strainer strain off as much water as possible. And you can serve these just with a bit of black vinegar and soy sauce as is done in Northern China. I have my own sort of black vinegar, soy sauce, touch of sugar mix that I use that I've been aging for years and years. I can show you how to do that. If you like, go down to the comments below if you'd like to see that recipe. But it's really simple. A bit of chili oil, a bit of exo sauce, however you like to have your dumplings. This has been the first step. This is lesson one. I hope you've learned something. But Dumpling School will be continuing for the next few weeks, so check back in next week for a new video.